What is up? Good mic work. Back at you with an impromptu commentary, one that I was not expecting to do, but I figured I was obligated to come up here and talk to you guys a little bit about the big news that was broke this morning by WWE. I went to bed last night to sleep for eight hours, and when I woke up and I kind of turned on my phone to check my Twitter and I saw that I had like 75 or 80 new notifications, I was like, oh shit, what happened? Who died? And then I start reading the news of WWE coming out and just flat out announcing that on July 19th, in two months, SmackDown will be moving to Tuesday nights on the USA Network and will be going live. And will be having their own separate roster and the brand split has been confirmed. We've been hearing about the rumors of the brand split for a couple of months. I know I've talked about it a time or two and WWE has decided to pull the trigger. I'm a little bit surprised on how they did it. They just announced it. I thought it would have a storyline or they would do an angle that would lead to the brand split because you have Shane and Stephanie running raw together you know that alliance cannot last forever and eventually there's going to be a conflict there so I thought whenever they did the brand split it would be coinciding with the split of Shane and Stephanie but instead WWE released a long statement on their website and then Shane and Stephanie did a video making the announcement as well and they teased and alluded to the fact that whoever is in charge of SmackDown needs to be somebody that knows what they're doing. So they could still go with a split in the future, and I'm assuming that's what we're going to see. Maybe Triple H gets back in the mix, and Shane goes over to SmackDown. SmackDown seems like more for Shane, since he's so different and such a risk taker. You know, SmackDown is something that he would probably want to take on and show his sister and his brother-in-law and his father that he can take his own show and make it great. So the storyline implications of this, I'm guessing, will be taking place in the next several weeks. But so many other questions leap to mind, like uh, the pay-per-views, for example. Who competes on the pay-per-views? Are you going to have SmackDown and Raw-only pay-per-views the way they used to? I personally was not a huge fan of that. Or do you have all the talent competing on both shows in their own separate matches? And what about the world champion? Are they going to have to bring back the world heavyweight title? You would think that if the brand split is actually happening and the rosters are going to be completely separated, what's the point of working over on SmackDown if there's no belt to compete for? So it seems like bringing back the world heavyweight title is necessary. I'd rather have them do that than create a brand new belt, a SmackDown belt that's blue with little fucking SmackDown logos all over it. Uh, I would rather have them bring back a belt that has so much tradition in professional wrestling and, and how far that belt's lineage dates back, I think the World Heavyweight title would be the right choice there, although they could still do it the way they did Initially, in 2002, when they first did the brand split, I believe they still had just one champion. That champion would compete on both shows. And some pay-per-views, he would have a Raw challenger, and some pay-per-views, he would have a SmackDown challenger. But that didn't last very long, just a couple of months, and they brought back the World Heavyweight title and gave it to Triple H. So I guess at this point, I, you know, I like having one champion, but I almost think it would be easier, just for the separation of the rosters, to have two different champions. And I'm just throwing this out there, and I don't think it would even work, but if you're going to have two separate men's titles, do you have to have two separate women's titles? Or will the women be an exception? Will the women's title holder, will she be the one to compete on both shows and defend against both shows' contenders at pay-per-views instead of doing two women's titles? I don't want to see them bring back the Divas title or anything like that. That would suck. And I'm also guessing they're going to separate the Intercontinental and the United States title, too. Maybe the U.S. title goes back to SmackDown like it used to be, and the Intercontinental title stays on Raw, and I think that could help both belts, too. And we have about a year, a full year almost, until the, the next WrestleMania, where you can have a lot of interpromotional matches, I suppose, kind of like the way they used to do it back in the day. So, so far, I am not totally against this. From what I've heard from everybody else, people have been talking to me on Twitter, other opinions of other wrestling personalities out there on YouTube and in podcasts. So far, not too many people are that thrilled with it. I think I'm one of the only people that is willing to give it a chance and is on board with it. And my reasoning for that is because we, we all know what we've seen from the WWE in the past few years. They've had their moments and they've had times of greatness, but for the most part, wrestling is just kind of feels like it's in the toilet, you know what I mean? So my argument has always been it can't get any worse. So what's the harm in taking a big risk and shaking things up and trying things? That's what all the fans who complain and criticize the WWE constantly, that's what they're always telling the WWE to do, to do things differently, shake things up, make some changes, surprise us. And the WWE now feels like they can take on this challenge. I mean, it's 
it's going to be tough. It's going to spread the writers thin. It's going to make a very highly uh, intense and stressful environment, I would think, especially on pay-per-view weekends when you've got to do a live three-hour show on Sunday followed by a live three-hour show on Monday followed by two more hours of live TV on Tuesday. That's an awful lot of fucking new programming that they have to do nearly every single week. So we get five hours of new wrestling content within two days and we get eight hours within three days on pay-per-view weekends. So it's a little crazy. But I like the move to Tuesdays. I think that's good. Instead of having that gap between, you know, if these two companies want to rival each other and they want to have like a war, a civil war within the WWE, you should put the shows back to back. You can't go head to head like Raw and Nitro did. That would be stupid. But, you know, even though that would be fun, probably. But you can't do that. So having them on back to back nights, I think, would be a lot of fun. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what this is going to do to my commentary schedule now. Right now, for the past several months and almost a year now, I've made myself available mostly every Monday night, only missing a few here or there, where I can watch the show live, I can live tweet with all of you and give my reactions, and then immediately following the show, I generally come up and do a commentary, and I usually have that up, you know, by midnight of that night, so... I get a raw review in, you know, right away. But now we're going to have another show also live with no spoilers and nothing to hear about ahead of time. So it's like, shit, what do I do now? I'm not going to be able to be home on every single Monday and Tuesday to tweet live and do reviews. That's going to be too much for me to handle. So i got to start rethinking my commentary schedule. I might have to start coming up here on Wednesdays and talking about both shows. And uh, that would throw a little bit of a monkey wrench in my routine and my plan. So WWE, you're really fucking up my universe here. Uh, But the other questions that come to mind is, uh, like I said, the pay-per-views. Are we going to have separate pay-per-views or is everybody going to compete on the same show? Are they going to bring back the World Heavyweight title? Who's going to be in charge of this whole thing? Shane or Stephanie or somebody completely new? And how do they split the brands up? I'm guessing there's going to be a draft. I think that's what they said. They're going to do a big draft. So you know that edition of Monday Night Raw will be really exciting and probably draw a pretty sizable rating, you would think. And how does this fit into the whole new era versus the old guard storyline that they're trying to develop right now on TV? I mean, do you give one show to the veterans and one show to the new blood? I mean, how do you do it? And are they going to stay consistent with it? Are they going to do their best to really try to separate these rosters as best as possible? Because if you have a brand split, but you still have the roster mingling with each other on a constant basis on TV and in other videos and stuff like that, it doesn't make the matchups when you finally do have those interpromotional wars. It doesn't make them feel special when these guys see each other every single week anyway. So the brand split, if they do it, I think they got to go all in, balls out, make it for real. If they do that, I'm definitely willing to give it a chance. The brand split was not all that bad a few years ago. A lot of fans thought it was a failure, but it had its moments. You know, SmackDown did develop a nice identity for itself. You know, its core guys on that show was like Undertaker and Edge and Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero. Paul Heyman was in charge of things back then. You know, the show was not that horrible. So I definitely think the brand split can work if done right. But that's the big factor there, if done right. We know that these writers are inept as fuck. They can't keep their shit together for one show, so now they're going to have to write two live shows. I mean, I know both shows have their own separate writers, but still, you know, a lot of the people are on both teams there, and I think it's uh, it's just going to be really hard for them to do, to provide quality content, quality entertainment for us, instead of just flying by the seat of their pants like they're currently doing. I think a brand split in today's era with the current internal structure of the WWE to, could lead to a lot of inconsistency in storylines, a lot of them starting things and dropping things and ignoring things and forgetting about things, and the fans are way too smart for that. We remember shit. So my overall opinion is that I'm definitely shocked by the announcement, but I'm also excited for it. And I know the brand split is not exactly a new idea, but given the fact that the WWE is so loaded with talent right now, with all the international talent they brought in, with NXT being on fire and constantly just feeding WWE one major superstar at a time. I definitely think there's enough talent around to supply and fill two rosters. I think they have that. They haven't created the big mega superstars in the WWE as they have in the past. You know, John Cena is the only icon they've really created, and most of the fans hate that fucking guy. So the level of superstardom, I guess, would be spread a little bit thin with a roster split. But as far as the in-ring talent and the capabilities of all these guys and the opportunities it could give them, you know, now you've got a situation where Kevin Owens could be a world champion. AJ Styles could be a world champion. Cesaro can get more opportunities. Other guys like that that the fans want to see the WWE push, there's not going to be just one top storyline with one top babyface that all the fans hate that takes up that spot. You know, now you have opportunities for other guys 
to make names for themselves. So from that standpoint, I'm definitely on board with the brand split, and I will be the one to speak up and say I support it, and I think it has a chance to work. I'm not saying it will work. I'm just saying I think it has a chance to, and I'm willing to give it a shot, and I'm willing to get behind it, and I'm just happy that we're seeing something that uh, is a little bit new. I just really hope they don't try to do like a carbon copy of what they did last time. I hope they don't do the drafts the exact same way and do the brand split overall the exact same way. They got to think of some new rules and some some new ways to do things. And luckily, we've got about eight weeks on t- of TV here before the actual brand split starts. So they have plenty of time to announce those to us and let us know what the deal is, what's going to happen with the pay-per-views, what's going to happen with the World Heavyweight title, who's going to be in charge, how the draft is going to work, and how truly separate these two brands will be. I think we'll get a lot better of an idea about that as we go through here in the next few weeks. So let me know what you think, whether or not you're for or against this idea. Address your concerns in the comments section below. What are they going to do about this? What are they going to do about that? I'm sure a lot of you have the same questions that I just laid out here in this commentary. So, uh... It's a pretty big day in wrestling because, uh, you know, WWE is going back to doing something unusual. So an announcement like this has definitely changed the landscape of the WWE, and it'll be really interesting to see how all of this plays out. So I will definitely catch you guys after Monday Night Raw this coming Monday because I'm sure we will get a whole bunch more information on the brand split and what to expect. SmackDown is tomorrow night, so I'm sure they'll talk a whole bunch about it on SmackDown as well. And come next week, we should have a little bit more information than we currently do right now. So the brand split is confirmed, and in two months, a whole lot of things are going to change. I will catch you in just a few days. Until then, peace.